Well, welcome to episode nine of the Make Music Income podcast. And today's episode is called The Importance of Multiple Music Incomes. And boy, is it important this week as we have to deal with an elephant in the room. And I guess we can do that after we do our weekly updates. So let's let's hold let's have everybody in suspense to find out what what happened this week. Let's start off on a positive know. note. Let's yeah, do. let's do. <laughs> um, so go ahead. What's what's your week been like? Um, I'm working on finishing a cinematic folk folk album. Folk. Uh, this is something that I actually uh, shared a little bit of in my private live stream uh, for the Academy members last night, and had a, f- a full on technical. Uh, meltdown, um, which was embarrassing. So that far, my, my live stream. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. It went totally wrong. Last night. My whole computer actually just shut down. Um, but the, <laughs> the, and then those, the mic stopped. For yeah. no, for, you know, and then you were just like, <laughs> oh, you were, oh, you were there. I I just watched it. I think oh, I watched were, the replay. You were there for the beginning, and then you were like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I watched a little bit. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's so little... funny. Um, yeah, that was a total meltdown. I, 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 I mean, you know, it's like live streaming actually has been uh, remarkably uh, smooth sailing for me uh, up until then. So, and, you know, <laughs> things go wrong occasionally. But uh, they... it was just funny because I've had stuff like that happen before, and it's yeah. like it's a cascade of. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> anyway, the me- the members stuck around. The people stuck around and, and watched till the end, which was really cool. We had a lot of fun. Um, so working on that, uh, pr- trying to get maybe like a dozen songs together. I mean, it'll take me a you know probably another month or something. But I was thinking maybe of throwing a few to taxi, and then I was gonna maybe hold off on some and and maybe repackage them as uh, submissions to uh, directly to libraries. Gonna do a little experiment there, see how uh, see what happens. So um, yeah, otherwise not a whole lot new for me. I asked for, for some very pointed feedback on the academy from the members and got like a ton of uh, really really great suggestions. So I'm basically trying to. Uh, take some time to optimize uh, the experience there uh, for the members. It's been a lot of work and still so much to do uh, in order to, to kind of get it to the place I want it to be. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. That's uh, that's pretty much it for me. I'm just kind of like, you know, uh, still I got a lot of thoughts in my head about about our, our topic of conversation, but I, maybe we'll, we'll, yeah. I'll, I'll leave that for now and you can do your update. <laughs> Yeah, my week basically from the composing side and arranging side. You know, I think that's one thing I want to talk about at some point on my composing channel is the fact that we're as much arrangers as we are composers sometimes. Mm-hmm. And we, we the, the arranging part of who we are gets lost. Like this week I'm working on a lot of – as a matter of fact, I just – sent off a disco playlist to my Sony BMG library of some classical piano sonatas. And um, nice. that takes a lot of time to go in and compare them to other people, other professional piano players that you can find on YouTube and listen to their their version of Beethoven. How did they play this one phrase and all that kind of stuff. So in, in some ways I am taking – um, the, the music and I'm not playing it in I'm finding MIDI but I'm I'm really working it changing tempos and changing cool. and making it very expressive and, and stuff like that even though the, the MIDI is usually played in pretty well but it, sometimes you have to fix it up yeah, yeah. and um, you should, so you should I, let I, people I, know what the, a disco playlist is too because that'll be confusing for people good point disco is a pl- uh, is kind of short for discography mm-hmm. um, in this sense it's a it's an it's a company that lets you put your stuff up like SoundCloud in a very similar way to SoundCloud, except it's not a public place. It's a private place to put your music. So it's kind mm-hmm. of a mix between Dropbox and SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. And you can send people to uh, private playlists. Now, I think you can send p- people to private playlists on SoundCloud as well. Yep. And it probably costs about the same. But Disco is now kind of known over the past two years now as the place for music supervisors, sync agents, and anyone seriously in the film business or the the music business in general as the place to go and 
and listen to someone's uh, music. That, that's uh, right. And I would caution against using SoundCloud at this point because I noticed that like a lot of people send me SoundCloud links for uh, you know to review their music, and like the ads are just getting oh. uh, they're getting out of control. So it's it's not a pleasant experience if you're sending. I've that been to a music big private. fan of of SoundCloud, but unless you pay for it monthly, yeah, like you like you would YouTube to not have to watch ads, you can't listen without ads. And yeah. so to me, that's a bad experience. So. I am transitioning away from SoundCloud into using Disco. Now, Disco, I have to pay $15 a month for. Yep. But it's relatively cheap, and, and it's a really nice-looking interface. It's really nice to work with. It lets you put all your um, your your info in and stuff like That's that. That's right. So, all the metadata. Said, it's, 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 I used it when I worked at the label, and it's, uh, it, it is it is very well integrated. It's a, it's a nice little yeah. app. And and now, if you are pitching and want to, or want to be found, they have a thing called the library where you can assign some of your playlist or a playlist or songs to be publicly findable by people searching on disco only. So right. if it's a music supervisor and they are searching for tunes, sometimes they can go, they will go now to disco and search. And if you have your stuff tagged correctly, it could be a direct way for a sync agent or a music supervisor to find your stuff. Now, I haven't got into that side yet because I just kind of reconfigured my account with them, but I plan to. And uh, that's going to be another strategy for 2022. It also um, it, it also functions as a as an email um, server or like an email provider, right? And it's like a in the same way that like a, um, I don't know, like a Mailchimp does. You know, you can uh, you can compile. Yeah, that's right. You can send out you can. like mass emails. So yeah. Anyway, just an aside. Yeah, you can. Um, I've also been uh, really trying to. <laughs> I haven't really gotten to it completely yet, that, but this week talking with a lot of my clients about the country songs that we are working on for the same Sony BMG library. We're doing a country album, very contemporary, but uh, trying to get, you know, sometimes getting a project started or a music song started is just about getting the logic file set up. You, you could almost say, okay, I want to get this song started. It's in your head forever. But until you put it onto logic or your DAW and make a file for it and make a folder and start something, it's not really started. Mm -hmm. But once it is, it's started. So I've done that on, I'm, I'm doing that this week on the country albums. And it also lets you know what's missing, what you have to add to it, all that kind of stuff and, and make the right kind of roughs to send for the vocalist to sing to and stuff like that. And right. we'll be using... Uh, Nashville vocalists and country pros off of Sound Better and just the people that I know in the business. So awesome. that's going to be happening. Um, also, I've been mixing some jazz hymns, which has been part of this gospel project I've been working on for a long time, and I'm going to pitch that. Looks like I've got enough jazzy ones, though, to pitch these kind of jazz versions of hymns, like bar jazz. If I don't know if everybody will have any use for it, but we'll see. And uh, on non-music and composing side, you might see an empty space here and an empty keyboard rack. It's because I <laughs> sold yesterday uh, in a, in po possibly a fit of insanity, but um, and music and monetary need. I sold my Yamaha P515, which if you know me, you know I love that keyboard so much. I have a just a deep love for the action of it. The mm -hmm. action more than the keep than the than the guts of it. I don't use the sounds. I I use bought mating. it so that it would be a good feeling controller. Yeah. The problem is it's a stage piano and stage pianos don't control well. And I I talk about this stuff at my keyboard channel and maybe I will we'll put this that information down there. I'm I'm I don't really make that keyboard channel where I do reviews and stuff public, but maybe I will. Uh, even though it's got a lot of subscribers and a lot of views. But anyway, um, so I do have on order, though. Don't worry. Do not fret out there, fans and friends. Uh, I do have a keyboard coming. I just got off the phone with Sweetwater and put the payment down on a um, M-Audio Hammer Pro 88. Oh, cool. So uh, that is one that I've been wanting to try out. Like I said, I have this keyboard channel. I do reviews. I had reviewed the P515 already. My next review is for the Control 61, yeah. which won't which won't be a very long review because the only thing to review in it is basically it's how it works as a controller. But uh, I'm, I'm on a quest to find the best 88-note controller keyboard, both in touch especially. Touch is the most important to me, but... How it works with things like Keyscape or Ivory or whatever you use as a piano uh, sound. 
what I found with my PA, uh, P515 was it was a great feeling piano, but it did not do well with um, with Keyscape as far as sensitivity. This okay. did much way better, you know. But this is a, a, a synth action type of keyboard, and so that's not what I want to be banging around on when I play piano or electric piano. I want something I could dig into, and so the key is going to be finding the right touch and then the right sensitivity to the uh, the, the stuff that we use for piano. Sweet. So I know everybody. You have an interesting co- – what controller do you use? Uh, I got an M-Audio um, something or other. It's, a, it's a <laughs> Control 49, and it sucks. <laughs> yeah. I should do a review about how much I hate it. <laughs> it's the All right. worst. Um, also this week uh, has just been filled with normal client work, a lot of music production, producing uh, R&B uh, – well, I'm producing clients for – Producing songs for an R&B group that I work with, producing songs for uh, a client in Africa, and also doing some coaching like I do every week, and music videos for clients. So that's my week. That's, that's awesome. always my week. That's always going to be there until sync licensing uh, turns into a big enough income that I don't have to do client work, then that's the way that's going to be. Yeah. But uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's busy, man. It's a lot. It's a lot. So let's, without any further ado, let's move ahead into today's topic, um, the importance of multiple music incomes. And you wonder, gosh, why why are you talking about this, Eric and Steve? Well, here's the reason. Yesterday, oh, not yesterday, two days ago, we woke up on Tuesday morning, because remember, Monday morning was the... Pr- the was the live Q&A from the, live from Q&A, the Motion Array then, team. And then the next day, Motion Array dropped the new interface for composers or I should say contributors because they have lots of different kinds of contributors of media. That's right. And to say that it was less than, uh, less than, uh, I don't know. Overwhelming? Let's just say, to say it was disappointing would be an understatement. It was, uh, in some cases for some people, extremely uh, disappointing, if not uh, (laughs) end-of-the-world feeling, especially people who depend on three or five hundred dollars or more of income to pay car payments, to pay uh, electric bills. Um, And I know a lot of musicians, especially during COVID, started to depend on that income. And Motion Array in addition to Envato Elements, which are both subscription libraries, pay on more of a, uh, a daily basis. You can see your income go up. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, at least you could. Uh, recently, it's not moving that fast. And pretty much, uh, if, you, you, if you follow my channel, you've already seen a video from me about this. If you follow Steve's channel, you've seen a video about this. And if you haven't, just go up to... Uh, wherever there there is in this video and uh look at the video on one of our channels i'll put you know we could, maybe we could put that or it's in the information below our channels mm-hmm. go to our channels and look at those videos where we talk about it we're not going to spend a lot of time on it today but no. uh i will say for the stock music composers who are out there that their email today was pretty interesting and did address a little bit of stuff yeah. So, agree? so we see, yeah, it did. It did. Um, one thing that I mentioned in my video yesterday was that, um, I wasn't aware that there was more things to, to be rolled out with regards to the dashboard. So I'm looking forward to them adding some stuff because it's pretty uh, bare bones at the moment. <clears throat> one of the things that was really helpful for us this whole time that we've, um, been able to see what our sales were, um, or at least, what income our songs were making was that you could go down and check per song what was being made that month on that song. Mm -hmm. And that is not there right now still. But in the email, they did say the first segment of the new artist dashboard was successfully released on January 18th. You will get more insights into the performance of your assets in the final release. So Mm -hmm. hopefully that's going to Hopefully that's Help exactly what they're going to do is, is kind of show you what uh, assets are doing well. Cause that, that's, is very helpful information. I think, um, the rest of it, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I really like the fact that you could, they, they show you what your total downloads are. Um, that's a huge improvement. Um, 
man, I mean, the level system is something else, though. I, I, I and I wonder whether they're <clears throat> planning on resetting that level meter every month, or is that something that accumulates over time? Um, I kind of have a feeling it's going to reset. How could every someone month. do forty seven hundred? Well, forty seven hundred uh, downloads in a month is is an obscene amount of uh, things to be download, like a uh, you know music to be downloaded in a month. But at the same time, there's maybe some people on there who are uh, creating you know multiple different assets, perhaps you know, and contributing a lot, maybe music and some graphic stuff, some video too. So, I suppose it is possible, but. Um, for that to be reset so I, at, at the beginning of every month, it'd be very difficult, you know, to get up to uh, level six or seven, uh, you know, on a monthly basis. Again, we're not going to spend a million years <clears throat> on this in this podcast because no. we want to really get into the meat of what, why we're talking about this now. But for here's an, a for instance, I have a new client who I helped get on Motion Array a few months ago. Her first month, she made fifty or sixty bucks by mm -hmm. putting a song or two up. I thought, well, or, or the first five, I should say. You know, the first five all got onto the library. Since then, we've put up four more songs. But last month, she had a song do very well. A couple songs do very well. And before they changed, there was also a big hubbaloo over what happened to the earnings last month. But mm -hmm. she was trending around $550 for the month, again, with only about seven to nine songs on there. I don't think several were live yet. And she was trending about 550 bucks for the month, last month. Mm -hmm. and she ended up with 400 and something. She she was one of those people really super affected like by $100 on the final number after they froze all the stats. So there's still a lot of fishy business going on from last month that nobody is getting any answers on really. They've yeah. tried to explain it, but... Uh, they're they, they're under no obligation to really explain it. They're just like, hey, this is what we pay you is what we pay you, and and anything that we show you now, including what we see on the screen now, is an estimation. And they say that, and they said that then. If you look back then, it said this is an estimated number. Yeah. Um, and they're very clear to say that now. And the estimated earnings, accurate numbers will be provided on the monthly statement. Yeah. But that same client who was making five hundred and fifty dollars or made close to $500 last month is at $18 right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I and might, might taking a, a nosedive too. Um, you know, I, I generally would That's have more than a nosedive. That's almost like just cutting them, cutting them off. I'd, I'd <laughs> usually have more than 500 uh, bucks by now, like, you know, somewhere around six, six or seven, uh, in the last, like if we're taking the last, you know, four or five months, um, and it isn't even, uh, broken 200 yet. So, you know, it's kind of crazy, but you know, at the same time, it's like, um, it's, it's still so much, you know, even their system, like if, if you're looking at it relatively, it's still so much more transparent than hey. like, you know, what you, what you're going to get with like, cause I have my music in like audio, for example, like a, you know, audio with the two eyes. Um, and there's no reporting like whatsoever, you know, like I, they could, they, they could just, they just send me, you know, are, are going to send me money at one point or another. And probably there'll be no stats about the downloads or anything. There'll be no information. I wonder what Infatual Elements looks like behind, behind, behind the scenes. Probably not a lot of information either, but you know, probably. who knows? And I think it's very similar to this is probably the way it pays. I don't think that it paid out as much as Motion Array was paying. As someone said on our discord, Probably the anomaly was what we were getting paid before. Exactly. Not now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and here's the problem. Uh, I've done the math. Uh, my each download that I've had, I've had over 200 downloads. But it's it's um, if you do the math, it's it's about 28 cents per download. <clears throat> that means that if I get a, a a download at Audio Jungle or Pond Five, we're all average 12 to you know, sometimes 12 to $20 per, uh, as my cut, that this is like, that's like 45 times more than a download is worth on Motion Array. <laughs> yeah. So but how many of so those are you going to get a month? So, yeah, but if you only get five and you, and you only make $50 here, then you've probably made about as much. And maybe that's what they're trying to do, even out. But uh, it's just, it's getting, um, to the point where, and we're not here to really talk about Motion Array today or, or any of that. We, we're still, and I said this in my video, we still have no idea how this is going to 
come out in the wash. No, we don't. It's month? it's still early days, and like I'm gonna, I'm just gonna kind of like you know wait around, see what happens. But yeah, look, that you know, this is something that I mentioned at the end of the video yesterday, and this can kind of transition to what we really want to talk about today is like when these kinds of things happen, um, it's it's a reminder to not throw all your eggs in one basket. I mean, you certainly, I've always thought that like you know, um, you cannot rely. Uh, on uh, income from stock music libraries, not only does it fluctuate and it always has, um, but things change. The marketplace is, is been changing drastically for years now. Um, and uh, I think that if you were thinking that this grave train was going to, was going to run forever, then you were, you know, uh, unfortunately you're finding out the hard way right now that that's just not the case. And as much as I feel like, you know, an, enorm an enormous amount of sympathy for a lot of these authors that, uh, we're depending on that four or 500 bucks a month to pay those car bills and stuff. Because like, I, you know, believe me, like it's important. It's an important source of income for me too. But like, you know, from the get go, I kind of always knew um, from the moment I started uploading music to Audio Jungle that this was not going to be a reliable source of income for me and that I had to hedge my bets and, uh, and set myself up to, uh, you know, have multiple sources of income. Um, so that you know when things go awry with one then you have others that you can rely on so yeah um so let's talk about that first of all i will just say that um you've got to put everything that you make money with music in its place and you've got to make sure that you are spending the right amount of time on it uh and and you know what i don't mean in this is composing let's leave composing out as a thing that you spend your time on because we all should be if we're composers and we hope to make music off compose money off composing or 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 not if you just enjoy composing you should be composing and i don't look at that time as like lost time any time i spend composing something is worth it because i now have the composition whether i Make money off of it or not. I'm a composer. I want to compose things and have that to, mm -hmm. to just show my wife or to just show my – put on Spotify or to just put up to these libraries or put up to whatever. Right. So I don't, call, I don't think of composing time. But I think of stock music licensing as something you've got to be careful of how much time you spend. If your income was this and you spent this much time on it, it, now, if your income is this, you need to spend that much time on it. Right. And I talked about this um, a, f a few episodes ago or, or with my twenty end of 2021 thing. I knew how much I could <clears throat> spend. A couple of – an hour – two and a half hours a week I could only spend on tagging and putting stuff up to libraries because that's – that was all of I was getting back from that time. Now that's going to decrease. Maybe only an hour a week can I spend on – putting stuff up to non-exclusive or I should say stock libraries that are not going to bring that money back. So I'm not losing any time and I can move on to things that do have a better chance of bringing me income or bring me income right now. And I know if I just do them, I'll make money. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's difficult to know sometimes what to, uh, to invest your time in because a lot of, you know, the, the musical income is based on kind of long-term investments like sync music being one of them. Um, you can spend an awful lot of time, uh, you know, pitching and uh, and getting that kind of like that the whole sync package together with the expectation that maybe, you know, a, a year or two down the road, you start seeing some like royalties from placements and stuff like that. Um, and in some ways, I think probably people will, will, will relate to this. It feels kind of like a, a gamble. You're not you're not really sure what the payoff is going to be long term. Um, and I think maybe some people feel that same way about stock, like, you know, building up your portfolio in Pond5, for example. Like, you know, we, we talked about this. It's like, I don't think that, you know, 50 tracks or so in Pond5 is really going to is really going to get anywhere. You have to kind of like build up your portfolio there and have a lot of tracks before you start seeing some income. So people might think, well, this is a long term investment. Um, uh, so, you know, maybe I need to put in a lot of time. And so it's difficult I think I'm just saying this like as a devil's advocate of what you're saying is like it's difficult to know um, where to throw your um, the, the the majority of your time because sometimes you don't see, you I don't, don't think reap, it's that difficult you don't reap the rewards um, for for quite a long time and and but I think you have to be oh you mean with sync you don't know it's well with to, everything to know you don't, how much. even with say like you know take something as uh, I don't know, like for one of my income streams, for example, like the production music tools, the MIDI packs and the sample packs and stuff like that. 
um, it was very difficult for me to know what the return was going to be on that. And it took a lot of time to put those things together, you know, putting the actual music together, putting the, yeah. uh, the, the, doing the graphic design, setting up the websites, a lot of work, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that the, you know, the sort of, the problem is, is like, it's like, it's not clear what the returns are going to be on that. And, um, it, it can feel like a gamble sometimes, but I think, um, you, that's kind of the entrepreneurial spirit of is, is like, you're kind of rolling the dice, you're throwing out energy in, uh, into something without being totally sure what the returns are going to be. But I think that the important thing is, is that, um, if you can find a way to put that energy out into multiple different spaces, then you'll see eventually what the returns are going to be for one particular thing. And that might be an indication, okay, let's put more time into this or like, let's put less time into something else. Well, let's talk about some of those things. Um, number one, I think it's just like social media. Um, do you remember a time last year? Was it last year when Facebook went down for a, a day or two or something like that, that happened and everybody was just crazy? I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I do. But yeah. Facebook was down. Um, your Facebook pages, your Facebook groups, your Instagram also was down. That's where most people do their business or their marketing. Mm -hmm. So that sh proved how important it is to own your own ground, own your own website, totally. own your own other spaces, and have other spaces on YouTube or TikTok or wherever else that you can you can go. Yeah. So if Facebook's down, you can go over to your other place and, and still talk to, to people. This is a little similar to that. It's And by owning your own your own stuff, and we talked about this a little bit before we were on air about how important it is and, and some of the things that make you start your own thing versus depending on someone else's thing. So right, if you right. were dependent on a label and, and <clears throat> things don't go well, you know, you can go off on your own and be your own label. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you are on uh, stock libraries and, and they're not working out for you, there's other things you can do. So let's let's kind of talk about some of those other things because we both do those things to make income and we make way more income on those things than we do on stock music for sure. Yeah. So for me, you know, we, we go off into, let's talk about sync for a second. I mean, there's time you have to spend looking for libraries, um, assuming you have compositions that are ready. There's times you have to spend looking for libraries and then meeting deadlines like yesterday when I had a uh, client who, I mean, a library owner uh, who was want, who had a brief, and it needed to be ready by 10 o'clock yesterday, 10 a.m. Eastern, I had to have this thing ready, and I just showed him a song the night before at 7 o'clock, and he said, yeah, give me a better mix of that, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the pitch. Mm -hmm. And those, meeting those deadlines takes time, and you're, you're, you're risking that. But it was also a five or $6,000 payout uh, as far as the entire, uh, the entire pitch. So you can, you'll do those kind of things for those possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think sync is something like, it, it's more like an investment of time versus stock, which is, is an investment of time to make some consistent income on a monthly basis uh, sometimes. Um, but I think that, uh, and you know what? Motion Array is not the top earner for a lot, for everybody. There's a lot of people who aren't in Motion Array who still make hundreds of dollars uh, every month from stock music. So That's right. Um, and I'm sure that's what Daniel, if we if he was in this conversation, would say. There's, there's other, there's other, libraries yeah they said that's not the only library in the world yeah it's not dead yet i mean that the stock you know marketplace isn't totally dead i mean people are still making uh some you know consistent income from pond five audio jungle v fine <clears throat> so have i assumed that nothing at artlist has changed as far as you can tell this month so far no they haven't said anything about changes in artlist um, I mean, have you seen it on your dashboard? Everything look about the downloads same. Downloads keep trucking along. I mean, it's yeah, it's the same same old uh, from what I see. Yeah, the the artist, uh, the back end of it is exactly the same. You just need to feed them more. That's it. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to feed them something real real soon, actually. Um, but um, uh, so we we also uh, both either work with or have artist sides that bring in income. Mm -hmm. um, this this might be a time if you've been and now obviously certainly gigs are harder to come by but you have gigs coming up and there are 
gigs, uh, depending on where you are in the world and what your restrictions are, um, you know, there might be gigs that you can get back to or do work harder on and, and you won't be spending as much time on stock if it doesn't pay you as much as it did before. Um, I have a pod, I have a beautiful interview coming up as soon as I can. There's a lot to edit, but uh, with Tom Dupree, and I, I'm going to try to get the first one out tomorrow, but that might be a little, it might be this weekend, but because there's a lot we talk about. I might have to split it up into two different videos because there's so much we talk about, but talking about Spotify, talking about DSPs and, and how to place ads and all the kind of stuff that he does towards that and talking about NFTs and prod you know, different kinds of products that you can sell. Your artist side can still make you money and you need to make sure that that is one of the things that you're doing along with sync, along with stock and other things as well. Yeah, you know, and <clears throat> I've been following uh, Andrew Southworth a little bit. I've become sort of a, a you know, quite a fan of his uh, lately and just trying to figure out, you know, a little bit more about the Spotify stuff. Um, and there's probably a few listeners here that, you know, maybe have music on Spotify and, and whatnot and are kind of doing that artist thing. Um, Andrew is a really interesting character, you know, and he, it kind of, it made me think it's like, if you have something that you're good at, you know, or if you, you have, you know, I don't know, it could be so many things, right? Like for him, he's interested in the sort of analytical side of, of Spotify and crunching the data. numbers and he loves the data. Like he has that kind of computer programmer, um, mind and he just gets on, you know, he's just got on YouTube and he's just start and he just talks about it and it's interesting. Yeah. And, and that's all he does. He just talks about it. And I was, you know, and I find him really fascinating to listen to, but I just, the other day I went and looked, uh, I, he has like a consulting, like a one-on-one -on -one consulting service that he does. And he's got a little link, uh, in his, in the description of his videos. And uh, I think he charges like 120 bucks an hour or something like that. That's uh, but, low. And, and yeah, I mean, he'll look, he'll look at your, your ad sets and he'll, you know, he'll, he'll tell you what, you know, what you can improve. And I'm, I'm assuming that's what, you know, uh, the whole thing, the whole deal is, but, um, he's booked, man. He's booked like for weeks in advance. Um, okay. and, and like, you know, th that's just brilliant. I mean, he's probably pulling in a lot of money and all from something that, just stem from the whole idea of just like, hey, I'm just going to get on YouTube and talk about this because it's interesting to me. That's what I did. Yeah. I, I only got on here to talk about the things I didn't see people talking about on, uh, on, on YouTube about some of the things I was seeing. I didn't see people saying the things that I was experiencing with Taxi. I didn't see people talking about the things I was experiencing with stock or I was experiencing with sync. So I decided to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And to my surprise, people thought that was interesting. And, and uh, then I had people like you and Daniel and Jesse and people who have been really nice to, to talk to me online and stuff. But um, yeah, whatever the subject is, you know, if you think it's interesting, then there's other people in the world who find it interesting too. Yeah. And so that's part of what we're talking about. Be your own thing. Think mm -hmm. of your own brands. And uh, we both have multiple brands. As a matter of fact, St Steve emailed me on an email that I wasn't looking at today. He says, you have too many emails. And I'm like, dude, you have no idea how many emails I have. I mean, <laughs> I can't even keep all my profiles up in Google at one time. It says, you, you're out of accounts. You have to, you have to oh, delete yeah? something oh, or turn God. something off That's to nightmare. add in another one. Because <clears throat> now I have a lot of client accounts too. So a lot of times I'm logged into client accounts. But um, – but speaking of clients, client work, work that you do for someone else mm -hmm. uh, besides your own music is something that you need to be doing if you want to make reliable music income. Mm -hmm. It is probably the best income that you will find. The most uh, Reliable might be an iffy thing because people have trouble paying or, or whatever, and it depends on the level of client you're working at. Although I've had labels take six months to pay me on projects before, so they're not, I wouldn't say they're any more reliable than, than, than indie clients that I have. But uh, working uh, as a producer, working as a music engineer, pe helping people with your DAW to create music products, um, that's how I got started being a producer. I didn't want to. I wanted to be a songwriter, but I made recordings. People heard them and said, ooh, can you record me? And I'm sure you've had that happen or can you make i've heard mm -hmm. your stuff can you do something for me in some ways google did that they heard one of your things and that's said do that's something exactly for right us. that's exactly right yeah so uh, arranging for 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 people consulting with people talking with which is something you could do more 
of probably, I don't know if you do any of that, but one-on-one consulting. Yeah, well, I, I'd like to, I'd like to. I'm just trying to carve out the right time uh, for yeah. it because I just, <clears throat> I don't have time to uh, <clears throat> to do that right at the moment. But um, yeah, you know, it's like uh, it just uh, specifically something that you're, you're just mentioning. Like um, I have a friend who runs a label. I used to work for that label and uh, uh, and he, we, we were chatting, we were just catching up the other day and he sent me something that a mix that he was working on and it was like a, a remix of like a, a, of um, Eleanor Rigby. And uh, he had the little string section at the beginning, like someone had like, you know, done their own thing and I listened to it and I was just like, ah, it's cool, you know, it's a great mix, but like I can make that, those strings sound better. And so I told him, I was just like, hey man, like, you know, if you ever have any orchestral stuff um, that you need arranging or you want me to like, you know, work on for uh, any of the tracks. And it was like light bulb moment for him. He's like, oh yeah, like I got tons of stuff. Like, I, like I'd love to do that. And uh, I was surprised at myself that we'd ne- I never put those, you know, connected the dots there. But like, look, if you, if you are kind of like producing like orchestral stuff, you're messing around with string libraries and stuff like that. I mean, there's a ton of uh, people out there who would, who would take you up on like, uh, on some like simple arranging stuff like that. You could put yourself on Fiverr. I don't know if Fiverr is still like, you know, a viable marketplace, but you know, I see a lot of people offering that kind of service there. Um, uh, there's also Upwork, which is, is kind right. of like the the next level up from Fiverr as far as, you know, kind of corporate-y. Uh, it's a, right. little, a little bit more uh, higher brow, you might say, uh, of, of, a, of a marketplace. But you can also do that just by, well, you used to be able to do it by just giving CDs around to people, but mm-hmm. you can do that by sending emails to people and exactly. say, hey, listen, this is the newest thing. Exactly. You can do that by putting something up to Facebook and saying, hey, this is a, this is a new tune I just you, did. If you, you know what? If you have any needs, get in touch. Exactly. It's like ask and you shall receive. There are so many people who, like, it's just so simple. You just send out emails. I know it's a little time consuming, but it's more than just putting your stuff up on, on YouTube. I mean, it's like, I got really lucky with the, with the Google stuff, you know, like that was, that was a real right place, right time kind of thing. But a lot of the, the, you know, the best gigs that I've got have just been from me just asking, you know, yeah. Hey, do you need this? Like, Hey, like, would you be interested in this? And you know, they'll, people keep, keep it in the back of their minds. It might not be like, you know, they need something right away. They might hit you up in a year and that's happened to me. You know, just reaching out to people and saying, hey, like, I like your work. Here's what I'm doing. Check it out. A year later, they'll get back to you because, yeah. you know, that, that's the way it goes. It's like you just got to plant the seeds. I've had people come back to me 10 or more years later and say, are you still doing music? <laughs> I'm like, what else would I be doing? And they're, they're like, well, I've got a song. And, you know, and, and I end up doing an I end up doing an arrangement for them. And then I'll maybe involve players and, and singers or whatever. And uh, it's just about being consistently in music, doing it. The other thing is just being a musician. I mean, playing at, you know, a lot of churches are hiring out musicians now. So if you're a Mm semi-pro or pro musician in your town, there's probably a church nearby you. Mm -hmm. If you're a church person and don't mind that kind of thing, there's probably a church needing to pay you for their month, their weekly services. And that can be up to a hundred bucks a a day of of a a week, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, I got lots of friends here in Vancouver who, I mean, Vancouver is not a big city, but the, you know, they made full-time incomes as like, you know, playing cover bands and stuff like that. I know, I know not the, the cover gig isn't for everybody. I totally understand that. But if you're a player, you know, and you just like playing, there's, t- there's opportunity out there for you. I have a friend who makes five figures playing in cover in a cover band here in Orlando and he's upright bass and, and bass mm-hmm. player and guitar player. Right. And, and this band has just one of those guys that leads it, you know, and he's just a, he he just hustles. He kills it, yeah. and he he's got the, he gets them on cruises, gigs, cruises, all yeah. sorts of stuff. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and they are making they make five figures. I think I think he made twenty or thirty or maybe more a year working for these cover bands. So oh, yeah. being a musician, we we seem to forget about that. We seem to think oh COVID's ruined all that. <clears throat> no, it really hasn't. And guess what? Even if it has, wherever you are, if it's really super locked down, wherever you are. Eventually, it's not going to be, and then oh yeah, people are going to be rabid for live music. Yeah, no, I mean it's like COVID's not going to be around forever. So it's going to chops it, up. It's going to come ready. back, you know. Yeah, but exactly, keep the chop chops up and and get prepared because it's it, things are are going to come roaring back eventually. What, one other thing in client work that I do, and anyone who knows a program, let's say you know how to do social media, you know Facebook, you know how mm-hmm. to do. I don't think Twitter's that important anymore, but you know how to do Instagram, you know how to do TikTok, 
<clears throat> you know how to make videos. Anything like that that you can do, or let's even say you know how to make websites, or you know how to do all these kind of things. As a musician, you understand how what a musician needs in those things. Maybe you've already done them for yourself. You can do that kind of stuff. That's part of how. That's part of my yearly income, mm-hmm. and actually, it's part of my my monthly rate to most of my clients to not only help them with their music, but to help them with their, I keep pointing to a keyboard that's no longer there, not only help them with their music, (laughs) but to help them with their uh, marketing and and the stuff that they just have no idea how to do. So there's so much opportunity for music uh, related work Mm -hmm. that if one thing goes down, let's say you do have a job, maybe it's a, you have a day job and the day job cuts your hours back. Well, then just take one of your music things and gear it up, rev it up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I joke about this on my last video, but I am going to make T-shirts. It's going to say "Music Make Music Income." It's going to say all the things you need to be doing. All the things uh, you need to be doing. Being an artist, S- doing sign me up. Doing want... stock. I got you one. I Extra got, large. You'll be the first. Okay, you got it. <laughs> uh, you look more like a large, really. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, no, unless you're taller large. than you look. They shrink in the um, wash, though. You know, they always shrink. <laughs> Okay, so we've talked about client work, and I, and I probably think that even more than being an artist, even more than sync, especially when you're just starting, and certainly more than stock, client work is probably where you're going to make the most yearly income. Yeah. Unless you have a music job, and let's say you work as a teacher at a, at a school or a university. Mm-hmm. You have a job at a church as a music leader or director. You have a job inside the music industry, and you're getting a salary of some kind. It doesn't even matter what you do uh, in the music industry or you work for someone who has their own music company. So I think music jobs are something that you need to look at. I'm, I finished my master's last year. I'm trying to finish. I'm trying to find a, a teaching gig as, a, as another income stream. It's all about multiple income streams, streams with an S. I can't say it much. It's really why I started Make Music Income as a channel. I didn't say make stock music income. I didn't say make sync music income. I purposely made make music income because there's so many ways you can make income from music. Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot about stock on here. We talk a lot about sync on here because licensing is a sexy subject. And it's, and it's, it feels cool to say, oh, I can just make automatic money from stock libraries or, Mm -hmm. oh, I can have my, my music in film and TV. And yeah, that is pretty cool. But it's also not necessarily realistic money like you're used to from a job Mm -hmm. and client work. Uh, and music jobs are consistent income. And I miss, so I don't have any consistent job income. I had a church job until the middle of last year. I miss that income. Every two weeks, I got a check. Every two yeah. weeks. Those days have long, long been gone for me. I get, <laughs> I get no consistency whatsoever. And I, when I first quit my, my job, I used to work, like the last real job I had <laughs> was uh, I worked at a coffee shop. I worked at a, like the same coffee shop for like, uh, the six six years or so, and they were they're like one of the best in town, and they, they they paid me all right, you know, like they it was like probably twenty plus bucks an hour or something like that. It was enough for me to to live on, and then I would do all my other music stuff after you know uh, the 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 day was done, uh, and it was busy. Uh, and man, it hurt. It, it really was something to get used to when I left that job. I finally just dove into the deep end into you know the the full-time music uh without that consistent income i was oh man it was tough it was really tough to to let go of that and, and because there's a sense of security with it um and now it's like man it's just all over the place so some months where i just bring in very little and others where i bring in a lot and it's, it's a good just, thing it's the lady a, makes income that's how we eat sometimes <laughs> yeah well, i don't my, know about you <laughs> Yeah, well, she, uh, my my partner, she uh, she teaches full time. Uh, she teaches like a, she has a lot of students, um, and uh, so that is like much more consistent than than uh, than you know what what I'm bringing in. But um, that's just the way it goes, man. It's a, it's a wild ride. It's a roller coaster, and like you have to kind of be able to weather the storms. Um, and you have, couple... to be, you have to be very careful about how you're spending your money too. You you can't. Uh, yeah. You got you got to save some for that rainy day. You know. Yeah. There's a couple other, uh, uh, just to all touch on, you know, we talk about um, sync and stock, which is basically you're making uh, incomes uh, off publishing. These are really just publishing incomes uh, mm-hmm. in, in, this, in this way. Um, and, you know, back in the day before 
everybody because before sync music became so sexy and stock music was even a thing you know when i considered publishing my music that meant writing songs that i thought an artist could sing so in, in sync licensing we're writing songs that we think can be used by a commercial or by a tv show or by a film but in the olden days, we would write songs that we thought could be used by a country artist or could be used by a pop artist or right. could be used by an R&B artist. And that's what we did. That still is a thing. That's still a You thing. could still write songs for artists to sing and pitch them to music publishers. They I, still exist. I have a friend As a matter who, fact, that does world that has day. not changed at all. Yeah, no, I have a, I have a friend that does, it, it does that full time. She has a publishing deal um, uh, with Sony uh, or, sorry, Universal. And uh, all she does all day is is just write songs, and they and she pitches it to to Universal, and that's it. Some sometimes they get picked up, and and they and they get bought out by other artists, and that's a full time gig. And and so it still exists. I know I have several friends in Nashville who have these deals as well, and that is their job to write so many ten songs a month. Yeah. Um. For for their publishing deal, that's what they owe them. Yeah. The other uh, thing that we don't talk a lot about, and uh, all of these things, by the way, I'll be getting to on Make Music Income. There, that's why this channel, I couldn't do like composing videos because there's so many possibilities for making music income to talk about that. I just, I have so much content in front of me. But mm -hmm. one of them is something I was involved with, with my when I was uh, getting my master's, which was classical music. Classical music and performance is way more lucrative than you know. Yeah. Just I, I debuted one song at, uh, at at a place here in Orlando at a big uh, the Dr. <clears throat> Phillips Center. It's kind of like a big orchestral hall with many different halls in it. Mm -hmm. And we I put that to BMI and you have to go into a whole different side of BMI. You have to go into the classical section of BMI. You have to register in that section. It's a different section you register your other songs with. Mm -hmm. And for that one performance of a 10 minute song maybe i made 75 bucks off my off my writer side and 75 bucks off my publishing side 150 bucks i made for that 10 minutes of, mm -hmm. of performance so and there is a whole world of performance out there for classical composers so if you're composing anything that's orchestral from super older classical sounding stuff to super uber contemporary and avant-garde stuff there are people looking Online, you can go to composer site. You can. There's all these composing sites that are looking for new material to debut on stage for colleges, for hmm. uh, summer programs, and all that kind of stuff. So that's something to composers. Again, we we look at the sexy things to compose for, mm -hmm. like uh, like sync licensing and stuff. But and, and film, there yeah. is the whole world of of classical world that lives in its own space and and. It exists, and so the, the the people that I was in school with, or the professors that I was uh, w learning from there, their livelihood was classical music income uh, right. from performance income. Right. Interesting. So, yeah, and that's and just probably there. We could probably think of there, there, I 50 also should, other things. should say that there's never, never been more <clears throat> indie, indie um, filmmakers. And videographers out there. I mean, the technology has made it so accessible um, to do that kind of stuff. And if you want to put a demo reel together and like work with some, you know, uh, some filmmakers, up and coming filmmakers, man, it's pretty easy to put yourself. Like, a, you, they're all on LinkedIn. You know, <laughs> like go yeah. go find them and and introduce yourself. Hey, I just ran into a a, a thing on LinkedIn. Was it LinkedIn about a composing for a company? that does international videos and they're paying i think was it uh, 50 dollars per minute and they're mm. doing 20 minute videos this is like an international type of nonprofit company and they're paying composers up to 50 dollars a minute uh of composed music and if you're so if you're willing to do it for that 50 times 20 is nothing to uh to sneeze at and if you like composing for stuff like that uh, they're looking. I answered the ad, but when, once I looked at the thought of it, I, I, I'm not going to do it personally. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it, it is a thing. There's a and lot of stuff anybody, like that out there. If you want to snip yeah. it out, uh, there's, there's just plenty of work. That's Be watching not LinkedIn. Particularly Be on LinkedIn great paying, a, you know, perhaps. But it's like, yeah, if you're just starting up, you know, something to put on your demo reel. 
watch composing or composer ads on LinkedIn or, right. um, or or any of the other job sites. I can't remember the other ones, uh, ZipRecruiter and stuff like that, where they're looking for composing. This happens more on LinkedIn, it seems like, that I'll see composing gigs where they're looking for a composer for a film. They're looking for a mm-hmm. composer for a company that A, a lot that of game, game developers, too. That's another um, thing we haven't even talked about. There yeah. are stock libraries for gaming music, that, yeah. and we don't even talk about that yet. That's a whole other thing. I know. I, I, I kind of meant to actually dive into that subject a little bit deeper last year, and I got sidetracked because I wrote some game music. Um, I haven't heard the best things about the uh, the income potential in yeah, like, it looks very in, small. Like, in like it looks game very dev market. Um, I think it's very oversaturated. Uh, but I think I mean that's could be said for for most. But now that libraries, we're at twenty eight cents per download at Motion Array, it's probably not, not much different. <laughs> not much, really. <laughs> well, well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But um, that, yeah, yeah, I think that like there's so many indie uh, game developers too, um, and that's it, that's another whole thing. Someone from um, the academy, one of the members, keeps on sending me like uh, music that is a ama- like just so. Uh, perfect for like the gaming world. I keep on telling him, you know, you gotta, you gotta start pitching to, uh, to game developers. This stuff is amazing. Um, it's there's, there's a certain vibe to it, you know. Uh, but uh, like, uh, there's a lot of throwback stuff, like, uh, like nostalgia stuff, like chip tune kind of thing. Um, yeah. You know, and, and there's a whole like resurging uh, interest in that type of stuff. So you know, I think that there's there's tons of opportunity. That's the, that's the uh, the message we're trying to. Yeah, that's the takeaway from this. Do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Find all the outlets. Do not get caught in a trap in a box of saying, oh, I only work in this little thing here. <clears throat> there totally. are many things. There totally. are many opportunities for your music that don't just exist in the one thing that you might have been fooling around with. So yeah. absolutely, uh, the importance of – I just can't stress the importance of having multiple music incomes, especially if you ever plan – to make neither Steve or I could do this just based on one of our incomes, unless it's maybe client income. Sometimes that could be enough. If we didn't fool around with stock or sync, we could probably still make a living based off client in client work. And most of the people that I know who are musicians or producers or, or engineers could live off the work that they get from clients. And you know, I, I may have just been able to, I may have been able to get by on, on, on some, on the stock earnings I made last year alone. Uh, it would have been pretty, thanks to Artlist, pretty thin. Probably. Uh, yeah. Thanks to art list. Um, but look, you know, it's like, I don't know if I'll be able to, to, to do those numbers again next year. You know, that, that would, that may have been an exceptional, um, year that I'll never, that I'll never get back to. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe not. It, it, regardless, you know, I'm still putting, uh, and this is a, still putting a, effort a time, and time into other, other things because where you will likely start to concentrate on art list, knowing that what happened last year with it, yeah. that that's where you need to put your attention. Just like yeah, before, totally. to, before this month, motion array was where I was putting my attention because that was the highest paying of the libraries for you. Now yeah. that is probably going to shift art list and you need to do, do that. And if you get in another library, that's big, um, you know, that you, that, it, that might be the same thing. Just like with me, yeah. I know my stuff is starting to maybe get used in the sync world, and that is where I need to, to focus my creative time and energy. That's exactly so. it. I, I really wasn't sure what I was going to get paid from Artlist. Um, it was kind of a mystery right up until the last minute. Now that I know what I earn, uh, or <laughs> now that you know, I, I get I have a much better picture of what it's worth to send them music. Uh, I gotta send them a lot more music. That's the plan. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I equated this yesterday to another job, and now I've forgotten what that was. But basically, when one thing is not paying you adequately for your time, you need to allocate the time that you get paid for that thing, and. Uh, and then spend the time that it's the 80, 20 rule, Mm -hmm. whatever brings in 80% of the income, pay attention to that thing. And if something brings in 20%, maybe pay less attention to that. Give that only 20% of your time. If it only brings in 20% of the thing and we, it's easy to get caught up in those other things and you really have, and that's what I've been trying to do this month is really focus on what are the things that bring in the majority of the income and how can I concentrate more on those? So I hope this has helped today. Uh, just let you know the importance of multiple music incomes, especially if you're someone affected by this great tragedy in the, 
<laughs> in the stock music licensing world, which most people are listening to this are probably going, I don't even know what you're talking about. So, because uh, you yeah. may not listen, you may not be part of stock music or Motion Array, and so for you, that's not a great tragedy. But uh, yeah. there are a lot of creators, and I'm sure it's not just music creators. I'm sure it's all sorts of kinds of creators that are dealing with this this week. <clears throat> um, After Effects template designers and uh, yeah, video editor, video uh, stock video and photo people who who make that. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we are. Yeah, don't don't let it bum you out, guys. Uh, you know, just take it as an indication that uh, that you need to kind of spread out the spread out the love and the energy into and throw yourself into into a lot of different. Uh, Keep watching both our videos. We're we're we find those streams. We're also both of us are still trying to put out videos that help you figure a way to to make income and and do better with what you're doing musically that's that's the whole reason steve runs his production academy is to help you get better at that so that it can that skill can help you bring in income Mm. from your music and the whole reason i do my channel is to show you kind of behind the scenes of how i uh am, am doing with that and so i'm gonna be bringing more than just sync and stock to this channel. I'm already on my channel talking about artist stuff and the interview with Tom Dupree I have coming up. It's mostly talking about nothing having to do with stock or sync. It's it's all about how to make uh, income and how he makes income as an artist. And uh, and he has an a entirely different kind of academy he's building that has nothing to do with production as much as it has to do with marketing. And so, you know, we all have our strengths. Everybody is online really to help you. To, if you watch YouTube, and you should be watching YouTube if you're listening to this on a podcast, because there's a lot of information to learn from there. Mm-hmm. And that's why I got involved with all of this is because I started watching more YouTube uh, on a daily basis and watching channels that I follow, like Mr. Steve here, who was a big inspiration to me. And, um, and so, yeah, here we are. Yeah, get on YouTube, um, folks. It's a good, yep. it's a good place to be, whether that be, you know, just, you know, following, there's just so much, there's so many great, uh, 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 content creators out there, but man, you know, if you got something that you want to say, just throw an, throw an iPhone in front of you and, and, and start talking. That's what I did. You know, my first few videos are embarrassing and I, and I can't even, I can't even bear to look at them, but, um, that's how it all started. And, you know, here I am, I got, uh, we, we got like, you know, a great community here in the discord channel. I got. I got awesome friends like Eric and, and so Daniel great. that I've made online. It's like, man, this uh, I really uh, I can't um, say enough good stuff about YouTube. It's been it's been great for me, and uh, and I, I highly recommend uh, anyone thinking um, about expanding the horizons in, in some respect. With you know, if if you're a musician or if you're a you know, um, if if you're a music producer, composer, whatever, man, like get on YouTube and share your work. Because you know, p- people there's people out there who are like minded and who would who would love to see it. And to grow your channels, speak from your experience, speak from what's going on with you as a composer, as a producer, as an artist. I think too many of us tend to just put the work up there and and have it hope that it finds its way. People, That's right. as Steve told me after I started this channel, that from the very first video where I wasn't on it personally, other than my voice, he said, dude, you have to be on there. You have to be telling your story. People want to hear what you have to say. Mm-hmm. And he was exactly right. And so you might have to get aw- get over your shyness and get on Facebook or get on Instagram or get on YouTube and, and start putting your stuff out there and finding your niche and finding your crowd and be that composer that you are, be the producer you are, be the artist you are, and make music income however you can make it. And, uh, and, and don't be tied down to one area. Do them all. There's lots of things to do. And I hope this podcast has helped you figure that out and get some ideas. So, totally. Hope so. Anything else, Steve? No, I think that's it. I think we've made our point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, over and over again. So, <laughs> folks, thanks so much for watching and listening today. You can also find this podcast on all the podcast channels, or you can find us on YouTube also doing this podcast on our either of our channels. So thanks again for watching and listening, and we will talk to you guys next week. Yeah, see you guys soon. Bye.